All right. I, it's rare that I I do any type of pre-interview with the guest. Odds are I've read an article, or I've heard a podcast, whatever. But in speaking with Matt Kerwin, who's now uh, writing for The Good Fight and also doing a PHL Sports Station podcast as well. Uh, Matt, you are recently back in the United States from Egypt. Now, how the conversation went, I said, Matt, how was vacation? You're like, ah, oh, it wasn't really vacation. I was still working, but I was in Egypt. And I'm like, no, no, no. No one's going to Egypt to work. I don't care how remotely how remote we are in today's day and age. Uh, what the hell were you doing in Egypt there, Pharaoh? Um, well, I was actually on an, uh, another archaeological excavation in Egypt, so I was there helping out. Uh, so, because that's my background, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, oh, that's amazing. For the sports, <laughs> yes. No, so you 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 studied uh, archaeology, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're Indiana Jones, basically. And you're out there in Egypt, you're digging around, you find anything interesting, you find any alien skulls that built those things, or are we still, well, what's going on there? Uh, no, so, well, this time uh, I was in an ancient town site uh, in the Nile River Valley called Abydos, A-B-Y-D-O-S for any viewers who want to look it up <laughs> and uh, read into more, read into it a little bit more. Oh, I will. I'm watching right now. I'm watching the Coliseum documentary on History Channel or <laughs> History. But after that, I'm all about uh, Abios. Abios. Abidos. Abidos. Copy that. Abidos. Okay, cool. And what was there? So uh, I was in the southern part of Abidos in the sort of middle Egyptian uh, town site. So me and one other archaeologist were excavating our units in a town site. So we uncovered some buildings, which uh, looked like a, a, a granary. Um, so, you know, sort of like bread and everything like that grain oh, that was yeah. going to be used. And we were pretty much excavating that area before I uh, had to leave. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Now, of course, Matt does a great job covering the fills and breaking down all things baseball. This is his background. Man's got to make a little side hustle here in archaeology. Exactly. <laughs> but, but, but I just want to let people a little bit further behind the scenes here. I had texted you maybe two weeks ago to talk Phillies, and you're like, hey, I can't. I'm out of the country. It's a little spotty internet-wise. I didn't get a like a, hey, I'm in ancient Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Like that would have been like mind blown. That would be the greatest text message back. They're like, sorry, I bothered you. Uh, let's talk when you get back. But no, that's great. Good for you. Uh, I, we've talked about this before off the air. I'm a history nerd. I I love that stuff. I told you, me and uh, name drop Brad Lidge uh, have talked about this stuff before because he's excavated in uh, ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. And I, I told him, I was like, hey, if you ever need someone to hold, uh, I don't know, the flashlight or the, what do you call that thing? The trowel? The trowel thing? The trowel. The yeah. trial, yeah, 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 that's it. He was like, oh, I think I can handle it, but okay. And I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> I fanboyed out on the archaeological side of Brad Lidge, not the perfect pitcher. Hey, speaking of pitching and baseball, segue. <laughs> uh, all right, where are you on the Phillies' needs heading into the 6 p.m. trade deadline for Major League Baseball at the time we are this today, Tuesday? Are you center field? Are you bullpen? Are you starting pitcher? Where are you when it comes to the Phillies' biggest need? Uh, when it comes to the Phillies' biggest need, uh, obviously I'd like to have at least one more bullpen arm just to sort of solidify it. You know, obviously they just released Ryan Sheriff because of velocity reasons. Um, but I think that, you know, Sam Coonrod is also making a comeback. He's going to be back sometime this month. So that'll be a really great asset to have in the bullpen in addition to any new piece that, you know, Dave Dombrowski in the front office decides to add. I also think they need another starting pitcher because I don't think that Bailey Falter is reliable enough to keep, you know, to make a playoff run with these guys. And I don't think uh, Zach Eflin is going to be healthy enough to consistently pitch the rest of the season because, you know, as we've seen, he's been on and off injury with that knee thing for a couple of years now. So I'm a bit worried about that. So I'm looking more into starting pitching, relief pitching, outfield. I don't know what they're going to do. They've been stockpiling so many infielders. They could make th put them in the outfield or they could trade for someone, but it really depends on what uh, I've been hearing. Cause all I've been hearing, uh, they've been going more. So the pitching route, uh, this trade deadline. Mm -hmm. So one of the guys you talk about those middle infielders that they're st stockpiling the odd man out, as far as I'm concerned, is still Didi Gregorius. Bryson Stott has come on as of late. Looks like he can play the glove position, play center field, or excuse me, play shortstop uh, with a good glove. Didi's certainly been doing that over the last couple of games. But it seems like when Gene Segura comes back, Didi will be the odd man out. 
do you a agree with that and b think that there's any trade value in dd gregorius um i do agree with the fact that i think dd will be the odd man now he's just not performing offensively as well as he used to. I mean, this is a guy who used to be able to give you 15, 20 home runs and over 300 consistently for multiple years with the Yankees. And he would often start off the season the past few years with the Phillies, but injuries have just marred him uh, his entire tenure now. So, and I think that before he even re-signed, there was a lot of value in him. And there's a few teams that have pitchers and relievers that the Phillies couldn't grab that wanted DD before this offseason and are not in contention and might even take on that contract. So I think that there is a possible value there if he's packaged with someone else Mm -hmm. and they move him. So I think that's most likely what's going to happen, but it really depends on if you're looking about the Phillies here and now or for sort of into 2023. So Mm -hmm. It depends. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- let's react to the trade that's already happened. And that, of course, is bringing in Mundo uh, Sosa from the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, he's now a member of the Philadelphia Phillies. Jojo Romero is out. Your reaction to that trade was what? I was fine with it. Uh, I, I actually didn't mind it at all because getting anything defensive upgrades sounded great to me <laughs> for a, a team that, you know, his defense isn't really helping them and the offense isn't doing enough to outweigh the bad defensive play. You know, obviously we're, you know, seven, eight games above 500 without Bryce Harper and Gene Segura and Zach Eflin. So it is impressive that they are holding their own, but I think that has to do a lot with the coaching, the player stepping up and Rob Thompson's, you know, you know, bleep you mentality. Um, <laughs> So I think that that has has played a significant role in it. And, you know, Garrett Stubbs said it on the Farsi show a few weeks ago. So, oh, you know, look at, look at you working in the plug. God bless that, you. <laughs> hey, you, you got to keep up with the times. You got to keep up wherever the wherever the news is at. So. Next time. Next time you're in Egypt, uh, Egypt, I just want you to take the show logo and act like you just dug it out of the ground. It's like, hey, Cleopatra, big fan, big <laughs> fan of the show. Anyway, sorry. Excuse me for being an ass. Um. All right, so Didi, there you go. You had the whole thing. Uh, second, third, fourth uh, starter. What what caliber of pitcher do you think the Phillies are seriously going to be in the hunt for? Other than bullpen, if they're really going after a starter, can they get a third starter? Can they get a fourth starter? Like, where do you think they're going to fall in when it comes to the level of starter they'll be able to get? Well, I think that they're looking for a third starter. They're looking for someone who can who's close to Nola and Wheeler but not as good as them. But but you know what I mean? Like someone who will Between be them and Raider Suarez. Exactly. And I think that that's who they're looking at. Um, I know there have been a lot of rumors about Noah Syndergaard uh, with the Angels, and he wouldn't be a bad pickup, but he's not a third starter. He's a little bit below that. And I think that, you know, from what I've heard from sur- sources and other friends, you know, in the industry is that, they're kind of backing away from Syndergaard for a little bit, and he's more of a last resort rather than a primary target just now. So I think that they are exploring options right. to see where they're going with that. Uh, primary target being who, possibly? So that that that's the real question. And, um, you know, I think that there's some other pitchers out there that are a little bit younger and better than Syndergaard. Uh, someone who I'd like to – see on this team which i'm surprised they're even offering to trade but they did put him on the block and he is being out there is Tariq scubal of the detroit tigers oh wow okay um lefty pitcher so we would get a second lefty um he's been doing well and i think that you know detroit just doesn't give him the exact run support i don't know how much run support the phillies will get him. <laughs> we'll see but yeah you know, I think he's, you know, he's only 26 years old. He was supposed to be part of that, you know, core Tigers rotation with like Casey Mize and him being one and two. And they were great in the minors and they both been doing well. Obviously, you know, Mize has been afflicted. He's on the with the injury. I think he's getting Tommy John. He's on 60 day D, uh, IL. So he won't be back this season. Mm-hmm. So oh. but the fact that the Tigers are, you know, didn't make any improvement from last year. I think is how they're, you know, justifying the sale. Mm-hmm. Understood. So now that that he's been available, I've seen a couple other teams are in on him, and once I see that, I see bidding war, 
And I don't mm-hmm. think the Phillies have a lot to bid with when it comes to a bidding war. So is there a chance then that they're going to get rid of one of those top three prospects, like a, uh, a Logan O'Hoppy, for instance, uh, that uh, I saw as recent as yesterday, Jason Stark put out there saying that the Phillies apparently are not willing to part ways with them as prospects. Do you think it has, there's a chance that O'Hoppy would get moved at the deadline? Um, I don't think there is unless it's, you know, something unbelievable. I mm. think that, you know, O'Hoppy, uh, Painter, Abel, McGarry, and Brown are not going to go anywhere unless there's something really significant uh, pitching-wise or even center field-wise if they decide to go that way that's going to be available to them. You know, it has to be, you know, someone who's equivalent to more of a two or three starter on that end. And I think the Phillies are more looking for a solid three, maybe three, four Mm -hmm. type guy to fill that role. If they can get it, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are still available. You know, Martin Perez of the Rangers, uh, Pablo Lopez of the Marlins. I don't know how the Phillies or the Marlins are going to feel about trading with the division. I mean, we got JT from them, so it's mm-hmm. possible that they're not going to be, you know, too emotional about it. <laughs> um, uh, but I also think that, you know, uh, the Phillies have also been connected a little bit to, you know, Tyler Maley of the Cincinnati Reds, mm-hmm. uh, starter wise. So I think he would be, he would be good. And, you know, Carlos Rodon of the Giants. He's probably like the top guy left and he's being shocked and he's being, he's going to be available. So I think that would be insane. Um, But you know, the NL West, like bottom NL West, as well as like the Diamondbacks are giving up a lot and like Merrill Kelly, you know, he's probably going to be out there and he's going to be available, but he, I feel like he's more of a, a four, but he's having a, a stellar season. He's got like a two, eight, seven ERA right now with a one thirteen whip. (laughs) <laughs> and over a hundred strikeouts strikeouts already. So uh-huh. it's possible. It, it really, you know, it really depends. But I think that Cindergard's gonna be more of a last resort. Um, if anything, if things don't work out in the other deals, if they can try to make another deal. So let me ask you this then, because there are two names that have been mentioned a bunch, and that's uh Molly, and that's also um um to- uh, Noah Syndergaard. Uh, which one would be the better upgrade for this rotation? So, Maley is uh, pitching like he's got a four point four uh, ERA right now with a one point two five WHIP, uh, hundred fifty, hundred fourteen strikeouts as of today. Um, you know, Cindergard is more is like a three point eight three eight six guy right now, so he definitely has a better ERA uh, and WHIP wise. I, I think that you know he's also surprisingly uh, been really durable this season, but I also think that that has to do with him not being in Queens anymore because I honestly think that Queens is a plague on pitchers. I mean, just look at the Mets season so far, uh, you know, with Scherzer and DeGrom both being out for such a large amount of times. It hasn't affected them too much, but who knows if, you know, DeGrom comes back, pitches a game or two, and then, oh, out for the rest of the season. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened because, you know, the Mets are going to Mets. So... <laughs> Right. I, I'm I'm in Syndergaard's camp. I'm in Thor's camp before I'm in Mally's camp, for instance. I just yeah. think that, that would be the better upgrade. But I think you're I right. It, it's not necessarily the slam dunk. Oh, he's a number three starter. He's that three, four type of starter you would be bringing yeah. in. in. In terms of wanting to upgrade from Bailey Falter, I think you've done that if you acquire either of those two Absolutely. pitchers. I think that's the easy, easy way to put that. Uh, real quick, uh, talking about Gene Segura, talking about Bryce Harper. Got some good news on Monday about Bryce Harper getting the pins removed. He'll uh, advance the rehab and all that fun stuff. Gene Segura is already in his rehab stint with Lehigh Valley. Real ex- realistic expectations for when we could see Gene Segura back on the Phillies diamond and Bryce Harper as well. When do you think those guys make the return? Well, a lot of people are projecting Gene to come back August 2nd, which is, you know, today. Today, and, at the time we air this, yes. <laughs> and, you know, I think that – you know, right now in the minors, uh, during his rehab stint with the last five games with the Iron Pigs, he's, I think he's like three for 17, three or like yeah, something like that. I mean, but, you know, but he's had plenty of walks, a few strikeouts, but that's normal. I think he's just getting adjusted to having like the bat back in his hand and everything right. like that. Show me your health. Um, that's all I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. I think that if he's not back by today for the Atlanta series, then – probably by the next week at the, at the latest. I think he's going to be back within the next week. Harper. I'd love for him to be back in a couple of weeks, but 
I don't think that that's going to, I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be amusing. I think it'll be a September call up. And <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's going to happen most likely is that he's going to be the, the Philly September call up, which is right. going to be hilarious, especially if he goes on like a torrid stretch. Oh, sure. Um, in September, which is great. And, you know, I think that if, you know, Nick Castellanos, you know, he's, he's getting the slap hits, you know, he's getting those hits out there. If he ends up becoming the quote unquote signing of the deadline, that's also great. And we didn't have to do anything for that. Right. Uh, that like, it's, it's funny. You definitely mentioned Castellanos. If he gets on like, Hey, look, he hit 282 in July, which is a lot better than he had all season. Uh, no home runs. First home of this month since September 15th or September of 2015. Cool. Uh, but, uh, when it comes to the built-in excuse that some general managers could have, like, oh, we got Gene Segura back around the trade deadline, so we're fine. I do like the idea of, well, look, our September call-up is Bryce Harper. That ain't bad. Like, that's even more <laughs> of a couch hedge, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> what has gotten into Alec Bohm? What has gotten into JT Real Muto? Tell me about Bohm first. Well, Bohm, I honestly think that – you know, he even said it the best the other day. It's like the coaches have just make it have just been making it fun for him and the rest of the guys. And he is showing how much he vibes with that. And I think that when it came to the transition of Girardi to Thompson and the rest of the coaching staff, I think Girardi is a great guy. I think he's a great manager. I think that, you know, it just he's a different dynamic. He's a different type of guy. Not a bad manager, just wasn't the right fit at the time, at this point in time. I think that Thompson, you know, being a bench coach, you get to know the guys a little bit better and you get to know what's going on. And I think that he was able to take that into the interim job. You know, I think he's, you know, managing himself into the permanent answer for next season, which would be amazing. I think it'd be great if they just, you know, give him the permanent, you know, take away the interim at the end of the season. I think that would be the best choice. I don't think they may need to go searching after, mm -hmm. especially if the Phillies make the playoffs. Um, but when it comes to Bohm, I just think that, you know, him really focusing on himself and his craft, getting back to where he was in his rookie year where he was hitting like 330, you know, he's already hitting 300 again. And I honestly don't think it's going to stop there. I do think he's going to keep going uh, when it comes to his batting average. And, you know, if he – it's like 310, 315 by the end of the season, but he's only got 10 to 15 home runs. I'm not going to complain. Right. That's, no, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. That's amazing. You. And, and now that he's been moved to the top of the lineup, it's even more effective because he's going to get on, he's going to get on base, hopefully, for Nick Castellanos to, <laughs> you know, knock him in. No. Or JT at this Or point. JT. Yeah. yeah. And, and JT, another guy that had a fabulous uh, July. What are you making of him? I'm honestly shocked. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly <laughs> surprised. I'm very happy because, like, I know how hard of a working, how great of a guy he is. But I honestly thought he was going to pull a Matisse Thybul with uh, <laughs> not going to Canada. I thought that not going to Canada was going to make him worse. But it honestly, you know, it gave him the, that and the All Star Weekend and everything just gave him the reset. And honestly, I think that he's going to play himself back into his moniker of best catcher in baseball. I right. think that he still has it in him. I think it's deserving, and it'd be great to see by the end of the year. Uh, last one for you, or two two more for you here. Uh, when it comes to the Phillies, uh, and I'm sure we'll talk before the end of the season, unless you're in, like, China or something. Next to me, no, we wall. Here. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right, just making sure. Uh, huh. All right, Phillies making the playoffs? Yes, 100%. All I need. Like, oh, look at that. Okay, slam dunk. Yeah, all right. I mean, I have no doubts in my mind. <laughs> last thing then. Last thing for you. Uh, if you could excavate any area in the world, any historical site, anything, where would you go? If I could snap my fingers and grant that wish for you, where would you want to go? Well, I love, I love Egypt already. So, I mean, and I've obviously dug there a couple of times now. <laughs> but... If I could, that is the most humble brag I've ever heard. I've already dug up Egypt once or twice, but anyway, yeah. But um, go ahead, yeah. I, I probably want to go back to Egypt just because there's no seriously, there's so much that's undiscovered there. And if you talk to any Egyptologist, any archaeologist, only about ten to fifteen percent of Egyptian history has even been excavated. 
it, it's so funny you say that because I've recently become a TikTok guy. Like the show has been on TikTok for a while, but like I recently started going on TikTok and somehow I'm just going to go on TikTok for five minutes. Turns into like four hours. Like what the hell am I doing with my life? But in one of the things that I saw on my scroll. Welcome to Gen Z. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> totally. Um, when, uh, when one of the things that came up on my scroll was that Cleopatra lived closer in time to the invention of the iPhone than she did the fight, like the construction of the pyramids of Giza. Like closer in time, she lived closer to the iPhone than she did the pyramids of Giza. And yo, know, here it is, folks. He's 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 pondering it. Maybe yeah, I have yeah. the wrong. Maybe I have the wrong pyramid down. Whatever was the oldest pyramid. Whatever was the old pyramid. Yeah, I mean the 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 first pyramid was at Saqqara, uh, or Saqqara, however you want to pronounce it. Well, um, I like to say Saqqara as well, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was you know around late. 3000s bc so yeah honestly that that could check out I yeah that, that, but only by a few years only, only by, by like, f- only by a few years that could check out you're right you're right yeah. now yeah no you're absolutely no you're right because like she was uh running around with that uh mark anthony and that uh, julius caesar fella you know what i'm saying and that was like you know girls just want to do- have fun <laughs> that they do on that note on that note uh, Matt Kerwin, always great catch up with you. Thanks for uh, talking all things Phillies baseball. Make sure you catch him, uh, all his publications there on the good fight, as well as catching him, uh, with PHL Sports Station doing the podcast there as well. Matt, great catch up with you. And, uh, hey, uh, maybe write a story in hieroglyphics one time. Just what the hell? Why not? <laughs> well, that'd, that'd be pretty difficult. <laughs> uh, Matt, I'm sure it would. Matt Kerwin joining us. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Mark. Great to be here.